YouTubers, and welcome to another Doctor Who action figure review. In today's review, I'm taking a look at the latest release in the new 5-inch collector series, which is the Curator set, featuring the Curator and the portrait of Gallifrey Falls No More. The figure comes in a window box, in the same style guide as the recent collector series packaging. The side of the box features pictures of the Curator figure, and the back of the box features a picture of the Gallifrey Falls No More portrait, the Curator figure, and also a new biography about the 50th anniversary episode, and the Curator character, as well as also featuring a quote from the character. The inside of the box features a nice diorama display of the figure packaged alongside the painting in the gallery. So out of the box, let's look at the articulation. So beginning with the head, the head turns slightly left and right. You can hear that creaking sound. That's as far as it's going to go. Uh, you probably could force it a bit further, but if you do that, you're going to cause some paint rub on the figure's neck. Moving up to the shoulders, these move out to the side and swivel back and forth. There's also articulation. There's also articulation at the bicep, which turns 360 degrees, and articulation at the elbows, which swivel up and down. There's also articulation at the wrists, which also do 360 degrees. And it does look like we have articulation at the waist, but on my figure, it just doesn't want to move. Now, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be like this. I doubt it, because there is a join there. I think it's probably something like some glue has probably dripped down from underneath somewhere, and it's stuck it together, or the paint has stuck it together. So I don't really want to try and force this. So it could possibly have waist articulation, but it's very difficult to tell. He does have a T-crotch joint, so that means the legs can move forward and out to the sides. He has articulations which do 360 degree turns, and he has swivel joints at the knees so they can go back and forth as well. And finally, he also has the new ankle articulation which allows his feet to turn ever so slightly to the sides. Again, because the way the trousers hang, you don't want to push it too far because it might cause some rubbing on the shoe. So with the articulation out of the way, let's take a look at the head sculpt. So the sculpt itself looks a lot like Tom Baker as he looks now. I think they've done a very good job with the way he looks. Unfortunately, with mine, what lets it down is the paint applications. In terms of the head, as you can see, the eyebrows on mine are almost halfway up his forehead. If you look at the pictures on the box, and if you look at most pictures from other people who have got this figure, the eyebrows should be much lower. This isn't going to be too much of an issue because I have actually gone back and painted it. It is annoying, but that is something that we have to do. But other than the eyebrows, everything else is fine. The paint on the lips is good and the eyes. The sculpting on the hair is good. It's got the curls, even though it's a lot shorter than Tom Baker's trademark hair. I do really like the way that they've done the paint on the hair because you have this light gray wash with this sort of darker wash over the top. And that really gets into all of the nooks and crannies of the curls and really helps it to stand out and texture it. Moving down to the costume, this is where the paint applications start to get a bit more dodgy. As you can see, the jacket is a off greenish brown colour, and it has these different stripes. So they're blue and orange, you have the oranges which go vertically and horizontally, and then you just have the blue vertical lines. What is worth noting is that some of the applications here aren't great, particularly on the lapels. And as you can see on the bottom of the lapels, the orange and blue stripes don't go all the way to the seam, they sort of stop part way, and then there's just this blank space. Back obviously shouldn't be like that. And if we look at the upper points of the lapels, you can see that on the left hand side, it's all neat and tidy. But if you move to the right hand side, you can see this blue line that should be going across the lapel is actually mainly on the shoulder piece of the jacket and only a bit on the lapel. The lines are a bit skew with, they're not perfect. The same lines on the arms, they're wider apart, but they're all a lot neat and tidy, and they're neat and tidy on the main torso of the jacket. So it's just these lapel pieces, and it isn't just on mine, I have noticed this on other people's pictures as well. However, the jacket does have some other nice details. We have the sculpted flaps on the pockets, the buttons on the front, and the buttons on the cuffs of his sleeves. We also have this breast pocket sculpted on, with a handkerchief poking out, and that's been very nicely painted with a red undercoat and you have these yellow and black spots on top. Another area of issue is the shirt. So the shirt sculpt is quite soft. 
it's not great. You can't really see much definition between the collar and the buttons and the main strip down the middle of the shirt. Part of the problem, however, isn't the sculpt, it's the paint applications. Again, with all this crisscrossing effect, it really does make it look like the collar doesn't really exist. Certain pictures it looks more obvious than others, and some certain pictures it just looks like he's wearing a turtleneck. It's very strange, and I'm not really sure how else they would have done this. Perhaps if the paint wasn't as vivid, as you can see, the, the lines are very bold, especially the brown. And I think because it is such straight checkers, it just sort of throws the perspective of how that's meant to look. If we move down to the trousers, this has been very well sculpted. You've got lots of creases. It looks like baggy fabric, and that's just been molded in a burgundy plastic. And if we move down to the shoes, these are a gloss brown, and the soles are a matte brown, just to differentiate the two. He comes with a walking stick accessory. This is very nicely done. This is just brown plastic with uh, a small detail at the bottom sculpted in, like the little rubber bit on the end, and it fits into his right hand very well. The other accessory, of course, is the Gallifrey Falls No More painting. So this is actually tied to the back of the diorama at the moment. Uh, and the reason why I haven't removed this is because if I remove it, uh, I don't really know what I do with the painting. You know, there's no stand for it or anything like that. So I also like the way it is displayed against the gallery set. So I'm going to keep it attached to this at all times. I think it's going to be one of these rare occasions where I display the figure in the original packaging. So looking at the portrait, as you can see, it's a lenticular image. So you have a picture of Gallifrey, the capital, on fire, and then if you turn the other way, it's slightly more on fire. Obviously, it doesn't quite capture the depth perception that you got in the 3D 50th anniversary, but it was a nice idea to try and replicate something similar. The detailing around the frame is also very good. You've got some very intricate designs, very ornate designs around the edge and in the corners. And this has all been moulded in gold, but you have a dark gold wash over the top, just around the ornate pieces, which really helps the ornate bits stand out. Around the edge, we have these brown stripes, and again, that just helps it stand out even further. And if we look at the other elements of the diorama, you've got the hexagonal roundels, which is a reference to the Doctor's TARDIS, the suggestion being that the gallery is actually the curator's TARDIS. And you can also see they've added in these pictures of the ropes hanging from the ceiling, and that just suggests that it's holding up the painting, which is a nice touch. This is a bit of an interesting set, because here we have a character who may or may not be the Doctor, very much likely he is the Doctor, uh, which I assume is probably partly the reason why this figure got made, you know, it's another incarnation of the Doctor, and of course, it's one of the key actors to play the part. It's also a very key scene in the 50th anniversary, and a very memorable scene to many fans, so I can understand why this one was high on the list. Whereas, I have seen some fans on certain forums say, is this really a figure that people wanted? I personally I'm very glad to have it. I think it's a really nice set. I think it's quite fun to have a figure of Tom Baker as he is now, as an older man. It opens up a lot of, a lot of possibilities to people who customise figures, because if you remove the head, on that note, I will say that I couldn't pull the head off, so it may be a boil and pop job for this figure. But customisers might want to take the head off, and they might want to swap it on their Season 18 fourth Doctor figure to make a Dimensions in Time figure, or they might want to go a bit further and do versions of... Tom Baker from Doctor Who Night and from the Radio Times 40th anniversary photo shoot where June Hudson redesigned his costume yet again. So there is possibilities there if you're a customiser. Um, he does stand slightly taller than the normal fourth Doctor figures, which is a bit strange, but as we've seen previously with this line, the sizes aren't always spot on, but I think for the most part he looks fine. Um, he does look good against other figures. He looks great alongside the Matt Smith figure, especially in the set. It really does create the look of the final scene of the episode. Thank you for watching this review, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative. Um, please stay tuned for some more reviews coming up. We've got the new Clara figure. We've got the purple-shirted 12th Doctor. The black-shirted 12th Doctor has now gone up for pre-order on Forbidden Planet International's website. And of course we have the very exciting 8th Doctor from the Night of the Doctor coming soon as well. So that's very exciting. And then to finish it all off, we have the Flight Control TARDIS for the 12th Doctor. And of course, we have the other version of Missy to come as well. So, thanks for watching this review guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And I shall see you all again soon for another Doctor Who action figure review. Thanks for watching.